In this video I'm going to show you how to set up stereo tool for an FM station in just a few minutes. What you need is an FM transmitter, a PC or a laptop, and a bunch of cables. Most FM transmitters will use a BNC connector for the MPX input, which means that we need an adapter plug. Like this one, which goes from TULP to BNC. You can easily connect this to an FM transmitter and put a TULP connector into it. On the other end of the cable you will often see a mini jack connector or a TULP connector, or for sound cards like many of the Marion cards, an XLR connector. And in the latter case we will again need a converter plug. By the way, many modern transmitters allow you to connect an XLR connector directly and that would always be preferable. So at this point everything has been connected and we can download Stereo Tool. This will take a few seconds, you can just press on it and let it install. And within a few seconds, we're up and running. The first thing to do is to select an FM preset. And now we'll go now let's go to the FM transmitter settings and enable the RDS and stereo coder. The RDS and stereo sound cannot get out yet because the sample rate of the sound card needs to be set high enough for this. And we can do that under sound card settings, sample rate, and here let's select 192 kilohertz. To improve things further, let's use ASIO and select the proper sound card. Um, so first select sound card, enable ASIO, and go to the input settings and check that the input is coming from inputs 1 and 2, which on most sound cards will be the analog inputs. As you can see here, normal output is enabled. This is not for FM, so let's turn it off and turn FM output on. And here we also have to select the proper uh, outputs, which are for most sound cards for analog outputs, again, uh, outputs 1 and 2. I'm going to slightly lower the latency setting here, and that's not really necessary, but it will make uh, future calibration steps faster. Um, what you can see here is that in the current output signal that's generated, there's a uh, stereo pilot and an RDS signal. If you don't see these two at this point, then something went wrong. To make sure that our FM signal is within legal limits, we are going to use the internal test tone generator to generate a 1000 Hz sine wave and turn the FM transmitter on. Okay, we are on the air now, and if you look at the screen, you can see that we are slightly overmodulating. The bar at the left is a bit over 100%. So, we need to calibrate it, and for that, this display isn't precise enough. So, instead, we're going to use an external FM analyzer. In this case, we're using the Pyra analyzer. You can pick up the signal on a normal antenna, but for the best results, you should really connect the analyzer to the transmitter's monitoring output, if it has one. As you can see, we are indeed overmodulating. We are at about 80 kHz instead of 75. So what we need to do now is lower the output level to the sound card in Stereo Tool until we are at 75 kHz modulation. Next we need to check that the output is flat over the entire frequency range. And to do that, let's first try a very high frequency, 60 kHz. And I just want to say that I'm not using a high quality Marion card right now, this is the headphone output of my laptop. The low end is usually a bit more problematic. A sine wave is usually kinda okay, but as soon as you change it into a square wave, you get big overshoots. And in this case you can see that we are overmodulating to 88 kHz instead of 75. This is caused by the fact that almost every sound card has a high pass filter built in. And to compensate for that, in Stereo Tool we have built in the exact opposite of a high pass filter, so together they will cancel out. What you have to do is drag the RC slider until you get an as low as possible modulation. Once it gets difficult, you can lower the frequency further to zoom in a bit further and see more details in the numbers. At 30Hz, as you can see, we are almost okay again. 
And if we test another tone, such as uh, 800 kilohertz with the square wave, you can see that we are perfectly fine. So the next thing we can do is to turn the test tone off and go to the actual broadcast. And as you can see, all the values that it measures are between 74 and 75 kilohertz, which means that we are perfectly within limits. One final check that I always do is I look at the histogram after letting it run for a while to make sure that there are no peaks above 75 kilohertz. In this case you see that there are two peaks to 76, that might be caused by the fact that I'm using my laptop output. Lowering the level by just half a percent would be enough to get rid of those.